When breathing, air moves into the lungs when a muscle coats the diaphragm along with other muscles nearby contracts and causes the chest cavity to expand. Air is exhaled when these muscles relax and the lung tissue passively returns to its original size. This is called respiration. During respiration, oxygen in the air passes through the nose or mouth and into the pharynx or throat. It then goes into the trachea or windpipe. The trachea divides to become the left and right main bronchi which enter the lungs. Inside the lungs, the main bronchi divide repeatedly and eventually become small tubes called bronchioles. At the ends of the bronchioles are tiny air sacs called alveoli. Oxygen in the alveoli is absorbed into nearby blood vessels called capillaries. At the same time, Carbon dioxide, a gas in the blood that must be removed, passes into the alveoli and eliminated through the airways. This process is called gaseous exchange. In severe respiratory problems, the oxygen levels in the blood may drop too low or the carbon dioxide levels may rise too high. Either of these conditions can result in damage to the vital organs including the heart and the brain. Some conditions that may lead to severe respiratory problems include an obstruction in the trachea such as by a foreign object or tumor, obstructive pulmonary diseases such as asthma, chronic bronchitis and emphysema, diseases such as pneumonia and acute respiratory distress syndrome, severe weakness of the muscles that control breathing and damage to the bones and tissues of the chest. Under these circumstances, additional oxygen or breathing support through mechanical ventilation may be needed. Mechanical ventilation is also used during surgical procedures. The first step in mechanical ventilation is called endotracheal intubation. During this procedure, an instrument called a laryngoscope is used. To perform the intubation, a laryngoscope, which consists of a handle, light and dull blade, help guide the endotracheal tube to its proper position. The head is tilted back slightly and inserts a laryngoscope through the mouth and down into the throat, taking special care to avoid contact with the teeth. Using the blades, gently the epiglottis is raised, which is a flap of tissue protecting the larynx. Then, the tip of the endotracheal tube is then advanced into the trachea. Once the endotracheal tube is in the trachea, a small balloon surrounding the tube is inflated to make sure it remains smartly in place. A laryngoscope is then removed and take the tube to the corner of the mouth to prevent it out of position. After the procedure, to be sure that the tube is in proper position, the lungs will be inflated with a special bag and listen for breath sounds on both sides of the chest. If the end of the tube is mispositioned, both lungs will receive not the same amount of air. In some cases, an X-ray is taken immediately after intubation to confirm the tube's placement. Once the endotracheal tube is in proper position, the tube will be attached to a mechanical ventilator, a special designed pump that aids respiration by delivering well oxygenated air into the lungs and permitting carbon dioxide to escape from the lungs.